Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinny Magazine with another episode of Music Biz Chat and Chart Watch with me, Phil Aston. In this episode, um, I'm going to again, as usual, look at the UK number one album uh, position and break down the stats between overall sales to look at the physical sales, especially between CD and vinyl. And then I'm going to look at um, Spotify and how that's doing. And also the fact that you probably may have seen in the news that Universal have pulled all of their music from TikTok. So I'm going to, you know, chat a little bit about that. And the reason why buying physical music is so important in supporting musicians. So let's dive in and look at the UK album charts for a week number five in 2024. So who is number one in week five? In week five is James Arthur, who's gone straight in at number one. Uh, The ratings are at number two. Um, There's quite a few new entries this week, but I'm just going to focus on on James Arthur. Now, James Arthur is an X Factor graduate, as as he's known as, and that's because he's, I think it's the 30th album by someone who's come from that programme. Now, whatever your thoughts on it, that though, you know, those those are the facts. Now it's number one, the album's called Bittersweet Love, and it has sold 16,901 copies um, to get to number one. Of that, physically, there were 12,400 87 downloads with 2026 streams 2389 so what's the breakdown of those physical sales to cd and vinyl well it's 11,034 cds and 1,050 1,453 vinyl albums there are no cassettes so the breakdown of physical is just cd and vinyl you can see from that that there's 11,000 cds and 1500 vinyl albums so in this week cds are certainly way ahead of vinyl sales um, overall album sales are up by 3.22 percent on the week before at two million three hundred eighty-eight thousand two hundred and. 88. Right, the other chart I'll just bring up now is the official record store chart. Now, when I show you the, I just showed you the overall um, UK album charts, that includes everything, obviously, because I've given you the stats for number one release where it's made up of streaming and physical sales. The U- official record store top 20 is only physical sales. So this is like cassettes records uh, vinyl albums and cds and the ratings are number one there there's lots of new entries you can probably just make out on the screen kate bush is new in with the kick inside uh, magnum are back in at number 19 and the other chart i'll just want to show you is the indie album chart which i like to look at and this is made up of everything so this is downloads as well as physical releases um saxon are still in there drop down from number from number one to number 10. Um, no Man are in there. That's interesting to me because I like them. That's um, oh, that's on Burning Shed and No Man, of course, is a Stephen Wilson project. There's two albums um, there. Thunder Live at Islington Academy is in there. And Magnum are also back, um, oh, sorry, in the chart with Here Comes the Rain. And I'm really pleased to see that Magnum are still doing well um, after the sad loss of Tony Clark in. Right, from there, I want to move on to the streaming world and this kind of like argument that Universal have decided to pull all of their music from TikTok because they're unhappy, with unable to negotiate with TikTok that what they feel is a fair remuneration for royalties to their, for their artists. Now... There's two ways of looking at this, and I'll say straight off the bat that I'm totally on the side of the artist, but there is other dynamics involved here for me. And this is that TikTok is not a music streaming platform. It's a social media platform. um, Spotify is a music streaming platform, and Spotify doesn't pay very well either. And as you know, they've recently changed their formatting whereas the first thousand plays for especially for new bands don't there's no royalty at all um you know and i which i think is grossly unfair in fact i'm just going to jump around a bit and actually just 
talk about Spotify. On the one hand, Spotify have increased their subscribers to 236 million in the quarter four of 2023. So aren't they doing very well? OK, but they also made a 75 million pound loss, you know, so there's a lot there's a lot going on there's a lot going on here which is probably why it's a strange dynamic and how everyone's trying to get them to pay more money apple music actually pays the best royalty but streaming royalties are are not they're not good for musicians uh, musicians end up have you know a, the focus is on physical releases cds and vinyl and obviously merch and live gigs etc let's go back to tiktok because tiktok's perspective on this is that they're saying um, the bands should be pleased of the free promotion and they get on their platform. I remember when I was playing in bands and people used to ring up and say, do you want to come and play a gig in London? You know, just think of the exposure. There's no money. Um, there's always money. Um, but I always feel, I feel it's, I feel it's really bad that music is just seen as this free commodity. Now, TikTok, I think, bit began as musically it's it's built itself on the use of music i know it's experimenting with a with part of its platform in having no music or probably just some ai driven music to go behind the funny dance videos and all the rest of it and i'm not coming down on tiktok completely because now spinning magazine is on tiktok um we have a foot um, a kind of little outpost on every so social media platform and there's over a billion users and there's no doubt about it that Kate Bush is um, running up that hill became a hit again because of the amount of times it was shared across TikTok I know it was in Stranger Things and it was discovered but because of that and those little clips across TikTok it became a massive hit Music Week is the bible of the music industry and in its magazine, it has a section on TikTok, TikTok trending, you know, the, inside the most viral tracks of the month. So the music business really has a deep interest in TikTok. So Universal pulling all their music off, it means that lots of videos now have gone silent and lots of people sharing stuff saying, well, what's, it's not fair, my video of me dancing, has dis the tracks disappeared. But why should the music be free? Why should it be just seen as this? You know, that if you're going to use music, it should be respected. It really should. There is a balance. I mean, I was talking to someone the other day and I said, yeah, but, you know, you can discover new things on TikTok. I don't know whether people go to TikTok for music or whether they go to TikTok to be entertained. You know, it's a different social media platform. You know, it's not you don't, you know, people will scroll and look at other people's creativity and then they don't always have the sound on. You know, the other thing that I want to say about this is that with the Universal, you know, pulling everything out and this kind of like, you know, trying to force TikTok to give them more money for their artists is that I think that anybody, whoever you are, shouldn't put too much faith in someone else's rented space. Um, I remember a platform called Google Plus. Does anyone out there remember Google Plus? I was very good at it. I had thousands, tens of thousands of followers on that, and I used to do lots of things on it. It doesn't exist anymore. Google decided they didn't want to do it, so they just pulled the plug. And and I think the thing is with, with music is, you know, the same thing with Now Spinning Magazine, there is a website, which is the mothership, which... So if you're a band, your website is important. Don't call your Facebook page your website. Don't call your TikTok um, account your website. It's part. It's a spoke on the wheel is what it is. Um, you don't own it. The algorithm could change. I know I'm talking to you and you're probably watching this on YouTube, but the YouTube algorithm could change. If you put all your eggs in one basket, you lose everything. But your website and your domain name is yours and I think for musicians you need you, that needs to be your core keep that up to date I know from doing now spinning magazine the amount of bands I go to to interview or review their albums and I go and look on the websites and the websites are woefully out of date keep that up to date you know a lot of people are obviously on their phones scrolling around on different platforms but it is rented space and it can change 
add a, you know if tiktok decide their experiment with having no music at all on the platform works for them and saves them money and people just adapt then you really don't want to invest too much time in that because it isn't going to give you anything as a musician and obviously for facebook they pay a bit as well but it's all different whereas spotify which is a music streaming platform in some ways yes it needs to be nurtured and supported because people use it for discovery but it, equally the money that's given out as royalties needs to needs to topple down outside of the big labels and the big acts and the legacy acts with so many monthly views to the young bands who were trying to help and support as well and that's why i think outside of Facebook, TikTok, X, Instagram, whatever. Some of the places we as music fans should be going to to support our favourite bands, the new bands, is Bandcamp. I know Bandcamp has recently changed as well, but Bandcamp is a place for music. You can buy directly from there and you are supporting the artist far, far better. Um, streaming is for discovery and we can see with I was reading um, the other day that more younger people are going to libraries, um, you know, and buying books and things because of the tactile aspect of it. Etsy, wanting to buy something handcrafted by somebody. Music, you know, actually owning the physical item, you know, the, the CD, the vinyl album, the cassette, the book, the package, the box is what, draw, it's what draws us in. So this story about, you know, Universal hitting back at TikTok, it's interesting because there will be some artists who say, well, you know, I, 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 I actually quite like being on there because people find me or whatever. But it should you should still draw them in, put your focus on getting them to your website or your Bandcamp page and buying directly from you. Um, you know, this is the thing. It, it, music has changed so much. A good example of this is that I've recently reviewed um, a classic album and a box set, which is going out very soon on, on the channel, for Chris Squire's Fish Out of Water. And what really made me think was when I was reading the, the booklet and doing pulling together my review was the fact that this is 1975 and Chris Squire was already, had bought a mansion somewhere in Surrey. He was still in his 20s. And you read lots of... You read lots of stories about bands from that period where they'd moved into their country pile and they were still only 25. That's how much money there was around for musicians. You, A lot of musicians were triggered into be, wanting to become a professional musician or rock star because they could get a, they, they hoped one day to have a Rolls Royce or a house in Los Angeles or whatever. It was the trappings of being a rock and roll star. But musicians now, you don't kind of think, no one kind of uses those terms. You don't think of someone, oh, you hear someone's a musician, you don't think, oh, wow, I bet they're loaded. You know, wonder what else they're doing for a job. Are they waiting on tables? Are they are they moonlighting somewhere else? Are they, you know, the, there's lots of bands out there who look, they're releasing albums, but behind the scenes they're, they're working in a decorating business or they're running something else that they do as a, as a side hustle. And the music is sometimes a side hustle. So, yes, Universal have got the clout to push um, t TikTok into a corner and other labels will also be wondering what they should do. Um, but it is a social media platform. It could change. It could change its algorithm. It could decide to do something different. You know, we have no control over rented space if, you, if you're a creative person. So just be careful of that. Spotify is a music streaming platform and it, won't, and it doesn't do anything else but music. So, yes, I think Spotify should be supported, but it should be grown in line with how it helps musicians earn a living, which means looking at the royalty on a constant basis and also, you know, links perhaps within it to the Bandcamp page, to the physical sales page, you know, buying merch. You know, this is what's important. Apple... You know, fair play to them. They pay a bit more on the royalty and they're already doing lossless uh, and high quality audio. But remember, Apple do this, but it's not their core business. They do it. But again, they might suddenly decide we're not doing that anymore. And that's the trouble with these large companies where at the end of the day, as a music fan and finally 
Even if you stream, the amount of times and I upload my CDs into my library so I can carry my music collection around me wherever I go, the amount of times I've gone to play a track and it's greyed out because it's not licensed or, or the record label has decided that they're not putting that on there anymore. Uh, you know, there's a Van Halen album, there's the Budgie albums, there's all sorts of things that just aren't there anymore. And so if you rely on renting your music, then you have to understand that it may not always be there, you know. And whereas if you buy the album, it's yours. Even if you upload it and you stream it afterwards, your, your album is your hard copy. It's your backup copy is that final album. And, you have, and it's your art collection. It's your music collection. So thank you very much for watching and listening. And thank you for supporting me. Remember, music is the healer and the doctor. Please take care. Keep spinning those discs. And I shall see you on my next episode.